and somehow they still didn't get it. This is actually the fourth time that I've tried to get this particular blood work done. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Elizabeth. I'm mom to a toddler, Dominic, and currently pregnant with our second baby, a little girl. I normally make mom and cooking videos, so if you enjoy that kind of content, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. Today, I'm exactly 36 weeks pregnant, so in this video, I'll be going over what's been going on in my pregnancy over the last week. That makes me officially nine months pregnant, and I'm definitely feeling it. This week in fruit sizes, my baby is about the size of a papaya. She weighs about 5.8 pounds. I have a feeling she's gonna be a little bit bigger than Dominic. She just, she seems like she really likes to stretch out and kick me away up here. Dominic was pretty average. He was seven pounds, two ounces, uh, but I just feel like she's gonna be a little bit bigger. I also have horrible intuition, so we'll see. The big kind of crazy kind of annoying thing that's been going on this week is that I'm still trying to get results for some blood work. This is actually the fourth time that I've tried to get this particular blood work done. So it's really getting frustrating, annoying. It was actually supposed to be done with the very first time I got blood work done with my pregnancy way back in, I think, June. Early in your pregnancy, they do a whole bunch of blood work, uh, testing for antibodies, your HCG levels, STDs, a whole bunch of stuff. For whatever reason, they missed part of the order from my midwife. My care provider's office has a preferred lab in my town, but unfortunately my insurance doesn't cover that lab. So I have to go to a different lab and frankly they're just not as good. Since I'm practically going all the time to get my blood work done, I've seen three different people working there. There's only one of them that's actually nice. The other two just kind of seem like they're done with that job and have had their souls drained out of them. I probably wouldn't enjoy collecting people's blood and urine all day, but also having had to get the same blood work done four times is incredibly frustrating to me as a patient. So the first time I got my blood work done, they got some of what my midwife requested, but they missed the entire section for the STDs and rubella antibodies. Now the rubella, you actually want to be positive because they're testing for antibodies. So they want to make sure that your body can protect against it, then everything else you want to be negative. With Dominic, I had that testing done and the rubella antibodies were positive, all the STDs were negative, everything was basically what it should be, and nothing has changed that I would expect those results to be any different. I had some more blood work done about a month later, and my midwife just requested it to be done again at that same time. They missed it again, so then she requested it again. I went back a third time. I went back just to get these tests that they missed, and somehow they still didn't get it. My midwife said that it was supposed to be like three to four little vials of blood and they only ever took one. I don't know if it was their computer system that wasn't putting it in right, or they just missed something and didn't put everything into the computer. I didn't really want to go back a fourth time and I actually had one appointment that was, it was actually with an OB because the midwives weren't available that day. Uh, but he told me that if I was confident that nothing had changed, he didn't necessarily see a reason that I needed to get the blood work done and that he was fine with it. But then at another appointment I had with a midwife uh, she said I didn't have to go and get the test, but if I didn't have proof of being negative for the STDs, uh, that when my baby was born, they might want to give her a bath immediately. And for me, I'm choosing to not give my baby a bath at the hospital at all. That's what we did with Dominic. We actually didn't give him a bath until his umbilical cord fell out, I think was eight days postpartum. It's not something that's a huge deal, but just for me, there's I don't really see a reason to give them a bath immediately and it's stressful for the baby and it interrupts the bonding time. So I would rather completely skip the bath and I just don't feel like fighting that in the hospital. And she said there's a chance they might not even care. With Dominic, I don't know if they checked my tests, but they didn't give me any pushback about choosing not to give him a bath. I had a chance to get my blood drawn this past Saturday, so I just went. It's kind of hard to actually go to the place and get my blood drawn. They're only open till noon during the week and 11 on Saturday and they're not open on Sunday. And since my husband goes to work early in the morning, obviously I can't bring Dominic, so I pretty much have to go on a Saturday. Um, and sometimes we have stuff going on on Saturdays, but I made it in this past Saturday. It took three vials this time. I told them like, my midwife said this is supposed to be three or four vials. And she just said something like, oh, well, your midwife wouldn't know how many vials it is. My computer tells me. Like, I'm pretty sure my midwife who requests this blood work all the time knows how many vials it's supposed to be. But anyway, as long as it's done right, I don't really care. I don't have the results in yet, but they, they don't usually take more than a few days. So hopefully we'll have that soon and then I will just have it in my file. I also have to make sure that it's in my records because this lab doesn't communicate with my midwife's office very well. A couple times I've had to actually just pull, the res pull my results up on my phone and show it to them uh, because for whatever reason, there's not good communication between the two. 
I'm just hoping that that can be resolved and that I don't have to deal with it or worry about it anymore. As far as my cravings and food this week, I actually did have a pretty big craving. I really wanted pasta and some meat sauce. I hadn't had that in a while. Usually a couple times throughout the year, I'll make a giant batch of pasta sauce, especially in the summer when all of the produce is nice and fresh. But when I make it for the big batches for the freezer, I don't put any meat in it. Usually when I make pasta, I'll do like meatballs or some other kind of meat on the side. So I don't add the meat in. I'm trying to eat more iron rich foods right now and I didn't feel like making meatballs. So I just threw together a quick sauce, diced onion, some crushed tomato, uh, garlic. I usually I like to put fresh parsley and fresh basil in it, but I didn't have that. So I just threw in some Italian seasoning, a pound of ground beef. I think that was about it. It was actually pretty simple. I let it simmer for about an hour and letting it simmer, I think is what really makes a good pasta sauce. I didn't make my pasta from scratch because I only do that once or twice a year. Aldi actually sells like a pound of the bronze cut pasta for a dollar and it's really tasty. Sometimes I'll do like a chickpea pasta or whole wheat pasta because that's a little bit better nutritionally, but it tastes a little bit funny. I just wanted regular pasta and meat tomato sauce. So I had, I had a big plate of that. That was definitely a craving that I had been having all week. It was extremely delicious. I also, I didn't have like a super strong craving, but also had been wanting barbecue food for a while. I live in kind of a suburb town and unfortunately we don't have a barbecue restaurant. I feel like we really need one and that it would do really well because in the next biggest town south of us, there are two barbecue restaurants and north of us, I think there are, there are at least two, maybe more than that, but the closest one is like 15 minutes away. And when I do takeout, I try to keep it like 10 minutes or less. So you're not spending a ton of time driving and it doesn't get too soggy. Um, but my husband was going to be in the area close to one of the barbecue restaurants. So I asked him to order some takeout to bring back. That to me is definitely comfort food. I got smoked turkey. Um, and Dominic loves green beans. So we got a big side of green beans to share with him. Brisket is probably my favorite barbecue, but usually you can't get really good brisket unless you go down to the South. So whenever I go to North Carolina, we usually get barbecue like twice and I gotta get my brisket when I go down there. But usually smoked turkey is good. So that's what I went for. As far as my symptoms this week, I haven't had anything too bad specifically. Thank goodness the snoring has been better. I went to the chiropractor last Friday and told her and she adjusted my sinuses. She actually did something with like a pressure point on the roof of my mouth um, and a bunch around just like my um, around like my temples and nose area um, and she said that would help with the draining and I like I almost immediately felt some relief and for maybe an hour or so had some drainage and then I just felt so much better every night since then I haven't woken up in my sleep with having uh, being congested or anything like that so hopefully I'll be okay until at least my next chiropractor appointment my legs have been fine I haven't done any crazy walking or anything so that probably helps I haven't had any more of waking up with cramps in the middle of the night. I've been drinking even a little bit more water and liquids. That's probably helping. I'm still having Braxton Hicks, usually like one or so a day. And it's weird because I can actually, I don't know if like my body releases a hormone or something, but I can feel it like right before it starts to come on. Just, I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. If you guys have had Braxton Hicks before and get like a little bit of a weird feeling, right when they're coming on. Let me know in the comments. I'm wondering if anyone else ha has that too. You know how when your body's pumping adrenaline through, you can tell just because you feel different? It's not adrenaline, but it's just like something in my brain switches on and I'm like, oh, I'm having a Braxton Hicks contraction. Sure enough, when I feel my belly, it's really tight. So I know I'm having a Braxton Hicks contraction. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's just a little weird. As far as the dizzy spells, I haven't had any in the last few days, but last week I had one that actually lasted like 15 minutes and it wasn't I wasn't dizzy the whole time. I was only dizzy for maybe 30 seconds. I was kind of like seeing stars a little bit, had one of those really big eye floaters like right in front of my line of vision. So I couldn't even read anything because it was it was right there, really bright. That lasted about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, but I did not I, I did notice when I was having the dizzy spells, it was when I hadn't eaten very much recently. Um, so that particular time I sat down and had some lunch and then it went away. So I'm wondering if it has something to do with that. Even though I haven't had any recently and I think it did have to do with not eating enough, uh, I will mention it on my next prenatal appointment and see if my midwife says anything about it. I think my baby has dropped somewhat this week. Um, I'm feeling a little bit more room around my lungs. It feels like just when I look down that she's a little bit lower. I'm pretty sure she's head down and hopefully will stay that way. Last week I had a prenatal massage. It was fabulous. This was the first time I've ever had a prenatal massage. She asked me if I had any particular issues with my pregnancy um, that she could work on. I didn't really have anything in particular so she just kind of did a general massage uh, and I did the 60 minute one. Their price was probably on the lower end of what you could get charged. It was $65 for 60 minutes and I know they can definitely go 
more than that, still not something that I would feel comfortable spending that money on on a regular basis. So I don't, don't think I'll do any more, but I would definitely recommend it. We don't have too much left to get ready for the baby. We do need to install the car seat. We're gonna try and get that done today. Um, and then I started packing my hospital bag. Some of the things I'll be using in between now and when we go to the hospital, so I'll just throw it in whenever I go into labor. Once I have my hospital bag, at least mostly packed, I'll do a video on that. I always thought that the hospital bag videos were fun. My husband and I are going to start quarantining next week. Um, what I decided was three weeks before my due date. We already are staying pretty socially distant, um, but I do go grocery shopping in person about once a week. And sometimes on the weekends, we'll go to Lowe's or some kind of store together, uh, just as like a family activity. Uh, we haven't eaten at any restaurants lately. We're just doing takeout if we eat restaurant food. When the weather was warmer, we would eat outside some. I don't think there are even any restaurants that have tables still up outside right now. Basically, I'll just switch to picking up my groceries rather than doing in-person shopping. I usually get a lot of my groceries from Aldi, but unfortunately, none of the ones close to me offer curbside pickup or delivery. I have a Sam's Club membership and you can do curbside pickup from there. And Walmart also offers it, so I'll probably just switch to Sam's Club and Walmart. I'll continue doing that for a while when we have a newborn too. That will just be easier and safer. That's pretty much everything for my pregnancy this week, so I'll go ahead and show you guys the bump. Here's the front. Still no new stretch marks, these are all just from Dominic. And here's the side. I definitely feel like she's dropped somewhat. Let me know if you guys think so too. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Mm -hmm.